Today I'm going to be telling you about climate change effects on estuaries and associated fish. Estuaries are shallow and strongly influenced by tidal action, freshwater inflow, wind, wave action, water and air temperature as well as rainfall. And as a result climate change is expected to modify the physical structure and biological functioning of estuaries which will have a range of implications for estuary associated fishes. Climate change causes changes in temperature, winds and ocean currents, rainfall, extreme weather events, sea level as well as water chemistry. I'm going to briefly go through each driver of change, um, tell you what's expected to occur and also what will happen to estuaries and estuarine fish. So starting with temperature, this graph depicts observed changes in global temperature, so surface air temperatures, and it plots um, changes in temperature over time against the mean, the long-term mean temperature. And you can see that since about 1940, there's been a consistent increase in mean annual temperature, with the last five years being the warmest years in, on the instrumental record. Then if you look in Southern Africa at observed changes, you can see that um, this trend is consistent in our region, and we've had an increase in mean annual temperature consistently since the 1970s. As a result of increasing air temperatures, the water in the world's rivers, the estuaries and sea is also heating up. These figures show observed changes in sea temperature on the left uh, for the Pacific and Indian Ocean and also globally. So if you look from the surface to 2000 meters, there's been warming of sea temperatures, but this is not uniform and there are areas where the ocean is cooling. And then projecting these trends into the future for the end of um, the century for 2100, you can see that there are no more areas of cooling and there is only warming observed. And then what does that do to estuaries? Increasing air and sea temperatures will affect estuaries, with increasing air temperatures having a greater impact on temporary open closed estuaries than permanently open systems. And that's because the temporary open closed estuaries are cut off from the effect of sea temperatures for long periods and therefore respond to grating to a greater degree to prevailing land, air and river water temperatures. Climate change also causes changes in wind strength and direction, which influences water circulation or your currents. And there's been warming in the Agullis current, and that's attributed to a strengthening of the current associated with changing wind patterns. And models predict, predict that this will continue into the future. Changes in wind strength and direction also influence the strength of upwelling. We've had localized areas of cooling reported along the west and south coast, and that's as a result of upwelling. And it's recently been shown that extreme upwelling intensities have been increasing along the south coast. So if you look at this figure, which shows up an upwelling event on the south coast, you can see how drastically temperatures drop close inshore relative to those recorded further offshore. Fish are more sensitive to temperature than many an other animals with water temperature regarded as the most important factor controlling the distribution of marine fish. This is because fish are ectotherms, which means that their body temperature is the same as the water around them, and they have a range of temperatures that they prefer. When fish find themselves in warmer waters, which is outside of their preference, they may move if they are able to do so, with many tropical fish already moving, and tropical, fish, um, tropical species extending their distribution into temperate waters. This has already been recorded for many um, warm temperate estuaries in South Africa, where we have an increase in occurrence of subtropical species. For tropical species, winter survival is often seen as the bottleneck in the establishment of populations in temperate areas. With elevated winter temperatures associated with climate change, this may allow fish to overwinter and become established in these systems. Fish, uh, especially marine fish, use estuaries as nursery areas, so you get the juvenile fish in estuaries, and these fish may be very tolerant of warm temperatures. Bennett found that approximately 70% of juvenile tropical fishes inhabiting shallow water nursery areas, which was mangroves, seagrass, and tide pools in Indonesia, were able to tolerate temperatures above 40 degrees Celsius. PhD student Kerry Ann, who was looking at this effect on 
some of our more warm temperate species. So she looked at the CT max, which was the maximum temperature that these fish were able to tolerate, um, and she caught her fish in the Kariha estuary. So if you look at this at this figure, it shows the red shows the CT max or the maximum temperature tolerance, and the blue shows the habitat temperature, the maximum habitat temperature recorded in the Kariha where she caught her fish. Now this was showing groovy mullet, southern mullet, and Cape stump nose, which are three of your more common. Uh, marine species found in our estuaries and they were all able to tolerate temperatures above 35 degrees and the maximum temperature recorded in the estuary was 30 degrees. So you can see that they're able to tolerate temperatures 5 degrees above the maximum temperature that's recorded. Despite the tolerance of juvenile fishes in estuaries to extreme temperatures, the distribution and abundance of estuary associated marine species is likely strongly linked to coastal water temperatures as opposed to estuarine water temperatures, and we found this for mullet. So what we did is we looked at the distribution and abundance of different groups of mullet and compared that to estuarine temperatures and sea surface temperatures. We found little relationship between the estuarine temperatures and the distribution of the mullet, but a strong relationship between sea surface temperatures and their distribution. So if you look at group one, which is the tropical mullet, these species occur from um, tropical waters, extending their distribution into subtropical waters, and then you start to get far less of them in the warm temperate region. And you can see that it is the warm, uh, sorry, the, the warmer sea surface temperatures in the warm temperate region that seem to um, limit their distribution. And then looking at group three, which is your warm water endemic species, like the groovy mullet that was shown in the previous slide, you can see that their distribution is limited by the cold water temperatures in the cool temperate region. And then group four, which is your cool water endemic species, and we only get one of those in the mullet um, family, and that is Liza Richardsona, and its distribution is limited by the, the warm waters of the subtropical region. But it's unlikely that warm waters in estuaries are limiting their distribution because they were able to tolerate temperatures of 35 degrees during their juvenile phase. This is likely a result of the narrower thermal windows in the early life stages, so the eggs and larvae, which occur in the marine environment. Fish have evolved to reproduce during conditions that are suitable for egg and larval survival, which is normally within a much narrower temperature range than the juveniles and adults. A recent study looking at blacktail in northern Angola found that populations did not breed in temperatures above 20 degrees Celsius. This species uses estuarine and marine nursery areas, and if warming in this region continues, the species will stop breeding by 2080. Seasonal cooling of water temperatures from upwelling, not in estuaries but in the sea, may have severe consequences for coastal and estuarine species along the west and south coasts, this is because sudden shifts in temperature can be lethal to fish, especially if shallow water prevents them from finding shelter. Mass mortalities of coastal fish have been recorded along the south coast when upwelling causes a sudden drop in water temperature. And in the long term, an increase in upwelling may affect both temperate and tropical species and even prevent range extensions. In South Africa, that may cause a squeeze of the warm temperate region. What else does temperature affect? Temperature affects daily activities, feeding, availability of prey, predation, competition, swimming performance and immune function, as well as seasonal activities, reproduction, hatching and the development of eggs, as well as migration. Climate change also affects rainfall. If you look at these projections taken for southern Africa, Different models give slightly different projections. This is for December, January, February, but all seem to show a decrease in mean rainfall along the coast. And they also predict that there'll be an increase in heavy rainfall events, so high intensity rainfall events, particularly along the east coast. Changes in rainfall will affect the quality, rate, magnitude, and timing of freshwater delivery to estuaries and will potentially exacerbate human modifications of these flows. This will change the extent of seawater intrusion, nutrient levels, suspended particulate matter, temperatures, salinity, dissolved oxygen, as well as turbidity, 
which all impacts estuarine product productivity and the value of estuaries as nursery areas for fishes. In temporary open-closed estuaries, mouth opening and closing is directly linked to freshwater input, so reduced freshwater inflow will lead to prolonged mouth closure and shorter open phases, which will prevent the immigration and emigration of fish between estuaries and the sea. In your larger permanently open estuaries, reduced freshwater inflow may result in a reduction of the river estuary interface, which is often the most productive zone for fish. The value of freshwater inflow for estuarine associated fish was shown in the work of then MSc student Bacama Nordo. She looked at fish catches in the Kariha estuary following a one in a hundred year flood of the estuary, which resulted in the resumption of normal estuarine conditions in the estuary. The estuary is normally either marine dominated or hypersaline in the upper reaches. So during marine or hypersaline conditions, you get um, you get a lot of estuarine species in the in the upper and middle reaches. So estuarine species are species that are able to complete their entire life cycle in estuaries. And then following the resumption of normal estuarine conditions, we get an increase in the abundance of estuarine dependent marine species, some of which are only recorded during estuarine conditions, particularly um, dusky cob and spotted grunter. In KwaZulu-Natal, a major driver of change could be the increased extreme flood events into the numerous small intermittently open estuaries, which could result in these estuaries opening more often. These estuaries are perched, which means that they are above mean sea level, so that when the estuary opens, the volume can drop by 50 to 90 percent. Um, this is, will result in a loss of estuarine habitat for marine fish species. Climate change also results in sea level rise and extreme weather events. Several climate models project an accelerated rate of sea level rise over the coming de decades. Tide gauge data from South Africa for the last 50 years shows that sea level has risen along our coast by about one millimeter per year. Sea level rise increases sedimentation and erosion, which leads to poor water quality. Estuarine habitats will move inland, but if there is development around the estuary, there will be nowhere for the plants to grow, resulting in habitat loss. The effects of sea level rise will be exacerbated by increases in the frequency of severe storms and high tides, with extreme weather events predicted to increase in frequency and intensity in the 21st century, and this appears to already be increasing globally. Evidence suggests that the frequency of dry spells as well as daily rainfall intensity has also increased. These graphs of, sorry, figures show what happened during that high sea event we had in 2008. So on the top left, we have the Fish River campsite, which was completely inundated with marine water. On the, on the right hand side, we have the East and West Claremont estuaries. And then the bottom shows high water surging into the Kawi estuary. Severe storms can also damage reefs and destroy coastal habitats, such as mangroves, seagrass, and salt marsh. Loss of fish habitat, for example, mangroves and salt marsh, will ultimately affect fish species. The loss of the St. Lucia nursery area, not from high sea events, but from drought, resulted in catches of Natal stump nose, which is an estuarine dependent marine species, declining drastically in the marine environment. This is because there was no longer nursery areas available for the species. Climate change also causes changes in water chemistry. From pre-industrial times to 2005, the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide has risen by 35%. About half of this man-made CO2 has been absorbed by the oceans, and one of the primary impacts of introducing massive amounts of CO2 into the ocean is that the water becomes acidic. This figure depicts what's happened with atmospheric CO2, um, CO2 in seawater, as well as a decrease in pH over time. When CO2 dissolves in seawater, carbonic acid is formed, and you also get less carbonate ions, which are the important form of carbon. Animals need carbonate ions to make their shells, and it's expected that acidification will reduce calcification of shells, bones, and skeletons with impacts up the food chain. 
What will that do to estran species? Well, estuaries have much more variable pH than the marine environment, so it's anticipated that the greatest impact will occur on the life stages that occur in the marine environment. We tested that by looking at um, dusky cob larvae. Dusky cob is a marine species that's dependent on estuaries, but the egg and larval phase occurs in the marine environment. So um, Warren Potts and I had an MSc student and he exposed egg and larval dusky cob to current pH conditions as well as the pH predicted for 2100. And what he found was that acidification impacted on calcification as well as cartilage development. And it had severe impacts on the survival rate of these little guys because they all died after 21 days. This will have implications for the recruitment of the post-flexion larvae and juveniles into estuaries. In sum summary, some of the major climate change effects on estuaries in our region will be changes in freshwater, terrestrial and marine conditions, which will likely result in habitat loss, salinity and depth alteration, as well as eutrophication, as well as changes in estuarine water temperatures, turbidity and nutrients, and estuarine mouth dynamics, which will all impact on estuarine fish communities through changes in fish species physiology, distribution, community, composition, as well as abundance. Thank you very much.